Hello ladies and gentlemen we're back and this is another top 10 and uh, yeah this one is the top 10 Euro games that we've played that we've we, we own obviously we haven't played all the Euro games that have been released because there's absolutely there's a 10 billion of them but uh, yes yeah, it's gonna be like the top 10 Euro games that we've played and ones that we enjoy so um, yeah uh, we'll be back after this Board games, 4K. So number 10 on this list is a game that was released in 1995 and it's designed by a guy called Klaus Tuba. Tuba. So yeah, it's, it's the old, uh, it's the old classic Settlers of Catan, and um, yeah, I know this one gets a bit of flack nowadays because everyone's played it to death, and everyone so it's like sort of gets the same sort of flack as Monopoly, done it, you know? Oh, I've done like Catan, yeah, but we still love it. We love the um, the trading aspect to this. We love the um, where you all gang up on the on the on the pe person that's in the lead, and we love the the sense of, of of growing your little empire in your section of the board, and there's that there's that cutthroat element in there where you can block block the longest road. And you're scrambling for the largest army, and it's whilst it's you know it hasn't got that same buzz that it had 20 odd years ago. You know what I mean? It's still a wonderful, wonderful Euro game, and we love playing Settlers of Catan. So number nine on this list is Uwe Rosenberg's Agricola, and this is a, a medieval farming simulator. And who would have thought that a game that simulated farming in the Middle Ages would be so fantastic? And this, this we, we got the old version, not the new family version, or the, the one where you've got to buy the expansion to play five players, but we got the, five, the old five player version. And back in the day, this was this was just an absolute game changer. People was like looking at it, thinking, "What the hell is this?" And it's just, it's relatively simple. You just put some cards out. You take the actions, but you you don't know which cards are going to come out when. You know when you know what cards are going to come out, but you don't know when. And you've always, you've got the occupation cards that spice things up, and you've got all these other decks you can buy. And um, yeah, it's 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 just the right length to keep you interested and. You want to, you want more. You're just starting to get that engine going, that's pr producing all the stuff, and then the game's over. So yeah, it, it, it keeps you salivating for more. And that's Agricola number nine. So number eight on this list is Vladimir Sushi's Shipyard, and this is a four-player game, and it sees you uh, hiring staff. It sees you buying bits of your boat, different uh, types of um, sails, funnels, and stuff. And then what you're doing, you're putting your, your boat together and then you set it off in a blue ribbon competition to see who's got the best boat. And it's awesome. It's a, it's got a, I think it's got, is it three rondelles? And you, you, it's got a nice little mechanism where you've got these two pawns and one moves ahead and then the other one catches up. And um, yeah, it's a really novel, novel thing. Some people think it's complicated, but once you get your head around the rules and you um, sort of get used to the turn order, then um, yeah, it's quite a simple game, and it's got a, it's, it's it's quite dry. It's got this sort of brown sort of feel to it. You know, it's got like a very earthy sort of colours and very very muted colours. But um, yeah, insofar as gameplay is concerned, it's really well structured. The way that you you get to create something and then test it out. You know, a bit like Galaxy Trucker, the inverse of Galaxy Trucker, Vladimir Sushi's Shipyard Number Eight. So number seven on this list is a, a, a very, very old game, well not that old, maybe early 2000, 2005 is it? And it's uh, Andreas it's Frey, Frey, Folds? Frey Falf, I can't remember, it's up there anyway, it's Puerto Rico. And um, this one sat on the top of Board Game Geek for years and years and years and years and years before the advent of the Copa de Nou. And what this sees you doing is you, you take control of an island and you're producing different types of goods and you're trying to flog those goods to internal markets and external markets and uh, the, the one thing that changed the world as far as Puerto Rico was concerned is the role selection mechanism so when it's when you're the, the first player you get to pick a role and you get a benefit for that and everyone else gets to take the the action on that role but because you control that role, you get an extra extra benefit. It's like a, a superpower, and that that really changes things up. Because the roles that you don't choose get a coin, and they become more lucrative as, as a game progresses. And um, yeah, it's a. Some people complain that 
there's only one route through this game and once you find the best route then the game doesn't change but we've never found that because we're we're not very good at it and uh, we don't play it as much as we would like to so the, the game's always fresh when we when we bring it out and that's number seven that's puerto rico an absolute classic so number seven on this list is the game with the scary king on the front and uh, i'm still petrified of this it gives me nightmares it's like the clown out of podcast but um yeah it's Kalis and um what you're, what you're doing the king has decreed that he wants a castle built on the top of this Kalis mountain thing and um what you're doing you'll you'll you're build, building buildings, hiring workers, and you're working your way up towards the castle, and you're building parts of the castle, but there's a provost that moves up and down this path, and he makes life difficult for you by screwing things over. And um, yeah, this was one of the first famous worker placement games, and it, um, you know, it's, I think it's, a lot of people don't play as much as they used to, because it's been superseded by other more complex, or maybe more satisfying worker placement games, or maybe less complicated worker placement games, maybe. But um, yeah, we still love Kalis, it's, it's that, it's got that, I don't like using the term crunchy, but it's got that really sort of crunchy feel, where you've got to keep your brain, your brain is constantly thinking and thinking and thinking and thinking, and thinking but it hasn't got the sort of, it hasn't got that, that so much think that you're you just sit there looking at the board for 10 years yeah number six on this list is Kalis baby number five is a uh, absolute classic I think part of the reason that this one was so popular is the price point because it's by Ravensburger it's Castles of Burgundy and it was released with a price point in the UK of about 20 quid and you get for that sort of price you get a huge amount of game in this one so the theme is a throwaway theme you you're a lord of uh, burgundy building his castles right but um yeah what, you, what you're doing you roll some dice and then those dice dictate what actions you can take and which tiles you can take and then you're building up your your empire or, and you're building up and you get different points for where you place your dice and different actions and different tiles that you place and um, you, you sell goods to the market, or you, you buy goods from the market, and um, whoever's got the most points at the end wins. And um, it's it's an intriguing game, it really is. It's the amount of choices you get, the random nature of the game, is uh, what keeps this one fresh every time we play it. And you're never left with anything, nothing to do, because you can always buy workers for a couple of coins or, or whatever, and they sort of let, let you move your dice up and down. So. Yeah, Stefan Feld's masterpiece, probably one of his best games, and um, yeah, Castles of Burgundy, it's our number five. So number four on this list is a, a game we love, and it's it's a really fantastic game. It was number, our number one game of all time at one point, it's Christoph Bollinger's um, Archipelago, and uh, this is uh, sort of a mixture of a lot of other Euro games. You've got that sort of um, Settlers of Catan tile aspect, you got meeples in it, obviously, uh, from Carcassonne and all that. And um, yeah, so you 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 you're taking different actions on this action wheel, and you you're building up your empire, play, placing your meeples down, taking control, getting resources, and you're trying to fulfil a secret personal goal and a public goal as well. But if you play a certain variant, or you you, you there's a traitor aspect to this one as well, because you you don't know what the other people's goals are but you can profit from that if you can guess correctly so you're watching what everyone's doing and they're watching what you're doing you've got to keep your what you do secret up to a point so that the other players don't guess what your secret goal is because if they do do that if they guess it and they can get a lot more points so it's like a semi cooperative game you know because you need to work together to stop the indigenous residents from revolting so if ever they revolt the game is over so you've got to work together and there's crises that appear and stuff and um, it's a really really clever game it's just the rule book is it's dire but you can you can get around that by getting the second print of the rule book which makes things easier and getting cheat sheets but I would re definitely recommend that you dip your toe into the archipelago if you love your games so next on this list is a wonderful, wonderful Euro game. It's Terra Mystica, and it was recently reprinted as Guy Project. We haven't played that one, so we can't comment on that. But uh, yeah, everyone takes hold of a faction. They've, they've got a unique special ability. They're unique 
a way that they can terraform the land and the way you, you've got this map with different types of terrain on it but you depending on what race you are you, you've got the it costs so much to transform the land into the into the low into the terrain that you are most comfortable with and you're trying to build buildings you're trying to conquer lands you, you've got these random gold tokens and you've got loads of uh, sort of bonuses that you can pick up and it's like a sort of an area control um, engine building game and it's pure pure euro even though the theme is a bit thin because it doesn't even though you're using these sort of mystical races like the wars and witches and all sorts of things uh, it does that doesn't really come through doesn't really break through the theme the the actual mechanisms very well but that doesn't matter because it's a really really um, intriguing game and it's really interesting and you could play this one for the rest of your life and into the next life you know what i mean because it's that it's that deep there's that much to think about and it's that much replayability through the, the random placement of different tokens and stuff so yeah terra mystica i think it's number three isn't it i can't remember so number two on this list is a card drafting game it's seven wonders antoine bells are seven wonders and it's a phenomenal achievement this one we, we, we it's just amazing i mean okay so the main problem with this one is when you first learn it it's all icon based and you've got to learn what all the icons mean and what, what, what how the game works and flows but essentially the way you get your head around it is that you only pay an attention to the person to the to the right and to the left here right so everyone else it doesn't really matter so what you're trying to do you, you you draft these cards you play a card on your turn and you add it to your civilization and that might give you resources that give you points and you can concentrate on a military aspect and it, it's, it essentially takes something like this through the ages i don't know if you can see that there but it condenses it down into it's like taking a huge loaf of bread and cutting it up into a sandwich and it's this you know you've still got loads of meat on the bones you know and uh, it's, it's an absolutely fantastic game it's really really quick it's about half an hour you can play it to seven people and it's just it delivers more than it promises if you know what i mean and um yeah we love seven wonders we've got all, all the expanse apart from the new armada one and yeah we absolutely love it it's i don't think there's going to be anything quite like it ever again but it's uh once you once you get past the the icon aspect it's really really simple and we love it it's it's really really tasty so the number one euro game of all time is this one up here i don't know if you can see that it's concordia and it's mac Gert's masterpiece an absolutely phenomenal game of simplicity like you play a card and you do what it says on the card and that is it the hardest thing about this is it's trying to remember that you don't score points initially for what you do you score points for what cards you have in your hand at the end of the game and each card is related to a, a different type of deity and those deities give you points based on what you've done during the game so it's okay building up your engine to to mass produce things or to conquer lots of areas but unless you've got the cards that match that specific action type thing that you've done you ain't going to get no points so you've got to keep your mind on what you're doing and what you're going to be having at the end of the game and um yeah i mean we've got imperial and antiki and um and Bergam and navigador and all that but this one it removes that rondelle but places it into a deck of cards you know and it's a really fantastic game. I can't speak highly of Concordia enough. I mean, it's been out since 2014. It's spawned all these different maps. And um, you've got this um, expansion called Venus, but we haven't, we haven't played it because we, we've been, you know, as you can see, we've got loads of other games to play. We haven't got Venus yet, but we will get it. But we love this uh, vanilla um, Concordia. And even with the, uh, the added spice of, of the salsa expansion, which adds salt, different cars that give you special abilities and it's just Matt Gertz we we salute you mate it's just a, a phenomenal achievement this one and Concordia is our number one Euro game that we've played um, not of all time because you know we're not dead yet right so there you go did you agree with our list what have we missed out what haven't we played what sort of Euro games can you see behind me that should have been on this list I'm thinking maybe I should have put on um, Pillars of the Earth or Dungeon Pets or something but you can't put them all on there and um, that is that I'm afraid people so if you enjoyed this uh, this video if you want to see more videos about board games card games role playing games game books anything like that any any sort of um, tabletop sort of game stuff then I would advise you very strongly to subscribe to the channel put some comments down below in the comments section give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down we don't we don't care if you didn't like it tell us so with that in mind We'll see you 
next time.